in the next 20 minutes, my objective is to try and convince some of you to consider a career in e-commerce as an entrepreneur, as a serious career option. So that's my objective. So I'm going to talk about three things. One, I'm going to talk about what the commerce and e-commerce in industry in India is like. I'm going to give a good sense of that to you. Second, I'm going to talk about where the opportunities in this, in this industry lie. What is it that you can do as a young and starting out businessman, as an entrepreneur? What are the different opportunities that you can explore? And third, I'm going to talk a bit about why you should consider entrepreneurship as a career option. All of you are going to join the workforce soon, and I think it's very important to take an informed decision on where, on where you want to spend your working life. So I myself, over the last 15 years or so, have been associated with large e-commerce companies, Flipkart and Udan, but I, did, I was associated with them not after they became large, but when they were very small. So I saw these companies grow from almost nothing to the multi-billion dollar enterprises that they are today. So I'm hoping that at the end of this 20 minutes, some of you will be convinced to take entrepreneurship in e-commerce as a serious career option. With that, let's dive into the first topic. The first theme I have for you is commerce and e-commerce in India. So it is said that India has a $900 billion retail market. So this is a number that you will hear very often. But what does this mean? What is $900 billion and what is retail? $900 billion is approximately 135 lakh crore rupees. So it's a very, very large number. So all you need to remember right now that the market is very, very large. And what is retail and how do you imagine it? So keep the number aside and just for a moment imagine with me, imagine crores of Indians going into lakhs of retail shops on a daily, weekly, monthly basis and buying things like rice, dal, oil, books, garments, smartphones, etc., etc. The imagery that comes to your mind is the imagery of retail. It's a massive, massive operation and a massive, massive industry in India. And e-commerce operates in this space. Right. Now, behind this $900 billion of retail that you see, there's a much larger trade ecosystem that is present. Lakhs of retailers in India on a daily basis have to procure goods from hundreds of thousands of wholesalers and distributors who in turn procure these goods from manufacturers, who in turn buys raw materials on a daily or a weekly basis from different raw material suppliers. All this is invisible to us. We only see the transaction that we do when we go into a retail shop. But behind this is a big machinery that is running day in, day out in an invisible manner to make our lives what they are today. And that's commerce of India. Lakhs and crores of shops, of retailers, of wholesalers, and distributors and manufacturers, manufacturers going about their daily life so that you have food on your table, clothes to wear, and things to use. Now, over the last few years, what has happened is that e-commerce has emerged as an efficient and a smart way of doing commerce for India. I'm assuming that a lot of you would have bought from one or the other B2C e-commerce companies in the country, and you're all young, and I think you'll have a better intuition on why this is a smarter model and a more easier way of purchasing products. So I'm not going to try and explain e-commerce to you. But I'll tell you this. In spite of 10 years of growth, in spite of 10 years of large amounts of investments and extreme amount of hard work by a large number of people in the private and public sector, e-commerce is still only 5% of the overall retail of India. It's only 5%. So 95% is still not technologically enabled. So that 95% is the opportunity to grow. How large can it get? So Today we are at 5% in India, so how large can it get? So for that you can look at economists who, have, who are a bit ahead in the e-commerce journey. If you look at South Korea, which is the most advanced e-commerce economy in the, in the world, they have about a one-third, about 35% of their overall commerce happens online. If you look at China, it's about 25%. If you look at US, it's about 20%. Even if you look at economists like Russia or, uh, Russia or Brazil, these economies are also at a 10 to 15% e-commerce penetration. India is still 5%. So we have a large amount of journey to go. It's a large market, so it's a massive opportunity. 
Another part of this opportunity is in the B2B commerce space, which is where our company, my company, Udan, operates. Udan helps retailers procure goods for their shops. And we are only five years old. Until date, we have helped lakhs of retailers procure. We have provided employment for tens of thousands of people directly and indirectly. We are quite large. We are the largest in e-B2B commerce in the country. We are the leader by far. But still, B2B commerce, of the overall B2B commerce, e-commerce is only less than 1%. So 99% of the market is still unaddressed. So that's the size of the opportunity. It cannot get any larger than this, as far as entrepreneurship opportunities are, consider, are concerned. So fine, it's a great opportunity, but where do you start? Like, so size, is great, size is very large, but where do you start? What are the different ways in which people like you and me can participate? So then I will lay out three ways for you to look at uh, this opportunity, uh, three models to participate. One model of participation is that you go out and you build an e-commerce platform afresh. The way a Flipkart has been built, the way an Amazon has been built, any one of you can go out and start a new e-commerce platform which brings buyers and sellers together. This way of creating e-commerce is probably the toughest, but it's also the most rewarding and also the most impactful. And for those of you who have that ambition, I would recommend trying your hands at this particular opportunity. But this is not the only way. There are other ways too. Another way to participate in the e-commerce story of India is to create brands. India, as Indian commerce today, is mostly unbranded. And a brand is a, 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 brand is of a, is a thing of value because it captures a certain quality and a, and a certain price point. And most of commerce in India is happening without brands today. That's because it's been very, very difficult to create brands in India so far. But today, if you are a person who can create a product of high quality at the right price point, it's very easy to create a brand. That's because you no longer have to build distribution. You no longer have to spend huge amounts of money on advertising on TV or print. Today, you can use the power of internet. You can go to a B2C e-commerce platform or a B2B e-commerce platform and you can use those platforms to distribute your product. You can use digital marketing to spend just the right amount of marketing and target the right amount of people. All you have to do is to be able to create a high quality product for the price point that you want to address and do it consistently. If you're able to do that, there's a large opportunity for you to leverage e-commerce to build new businesses. Another way to participate uh, in the e-commerce story is to be a service partner to an e-commerce company. E-commerce companies don't stand alone. They work with partners in payments, in financing, in supply chain, in recruitment and HR services, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there have been a lot, lot of companies which are formed in India providing services to e-commerce companies. Some examples of these are, if you would have heard of Razorpay, which is a payments company. It provides, it enables so many online businesses. You would have probably heard of Ecom Express and Delivery. These are supply chain companies which came up to service the e-commerce companies. Uh, like Flipkart and Amazon, etc. So you could think of, instead of thinking of how you can create e-commerce up from the ground up, you guys can also think about how can I, how can I help e-commerce company do their jobs better? And by doing that, you can actually create new businesses. So this is one. The other way to look at the opportunity is to look at, you know, where is e-commerce underpenetrated today? And what can you do over there? So most of the B2C e-commerce today is still an urban story in the sense that the high income and middle income urban consumers are the ones who are making the most use of e-commerce. The middle and low income users, particularly in smaller towns and cities, are as of yet unaddressed in a meaningful way by e-commerce. So if any of you have ideas or thoughts on how you can build a sustainable e-commerce model to serve the mass market of India where most of India's consumption happens, then you have something golden on your hands. So that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is to look at the B2B e-commerce part. Right? What is it that you can provide to wholesalers, manufacturers, distributors using technology and supply chain services to make their life better? There again, you can uncover a new e-commerce business model. There, is, there are more ways to uncover new opportunities. Today, e-commerce is highly penetrated in mobiles, in books. But if you look at groceries, fresh fruits and vegetables, e-commerce has really not penetrated. So if you can think of models of grocery and fresh vegetables and fruits e-commerce, again, you have an opportunity on your hands. If you can think of, uh, if you can think of new ways of doing e-commerce, for example, when, when e-commerce started, it was on a laptop and desktop, you would go to open up a browser tab 
and you'd access a website and place an order. Today it's happening over mobile phones through apps. What will, how will it be tomorrow? Will it happen over chat? Will it happen over uh, social media websites? Where will e-commerce go? If you can create those new channels for creating commerce opportunities, again, you have something golden on your hands. And that's one other idea that you could explore. So what next? My thought process was to give you guys a framework, a way of thinking about what opportunities exist in the e-commerce space. I would recommend all of you to do your own homework, research the space, uh, speak, to, speak to a whole bunch of people, speak to users, speak to current entrepreneurs, speak to service providers, and see where the opportunity lies and discover it for yourself. So some of you may be thinking, all this is great, this sounds like a great opportunity, sounds like a big, uh, like a big opportunity, but entrepreneurship is not my cup of tea. Right? I am not built for this. Uh, how do I know this is for me? And that's what I wanted to address in the third part of my, third and final part of my message here. So the first thing I want to tell you guys is that entrepreneurship is not a career opportunity. It's not just a career opportunity or a career option. Right? It's a way of thinking and it's a life skill. What an entrepreneur does is essentially find out the needs that society has which are unmet and figure out sustainable ways to actually meet those needs. That's what an entrepreneur does. And to do it, he or she has to do different things. They have to build products, they have to build teams, they have to lead teams, they have to manage money, they have to run operations. These are all life skills that are helpful to you in beyond the realm of commerce as well. So that's one thing. That don't think of it just as a career opportunity. Think of it as a life skill. Think of it as a way of thinking. Right? That's one. Second, I want to tell you guys that above and beyond this, that the time and place that you are graduating in is very, very special. You are in Bangalore right now. Bangalore is the startup capital of the country. It's a very, very special place in the sense that you have tons and tons of startups here, and you can reach out to any one of these entrepreneurs for help and guidance, and I'm very sure most of them will come back and give you mentorship. You can reach to investors, there are angel investors, there are VC investors, who are eager to create businesses, to invest in businesses. All that support system exists here. There are lakhs and lakhs of engineering and development talent over here, and you can learn from them, and you can be one yourself. And last but not the least, this is a state and a city which has invested heavily in creating startups. And today on the dais, you have the who is who of the government of Karnataka coming here and telling you to start something, to, be a, to start a business, to create something of value and to create employment. And if you need any more further vote of confidence that the state machinery is behind you on your, journey, on your journey as an entrepreneur, I think this event is a testament to that. Another thing that I want to tell you about is the time, the time in which you are graduating. So when I graduated in 2004, the world had changed completely. The world that I left to enter college and the world that I left, I entered after I left college was very different. When I entered in 2000, there were no, there were no mobile phones. Uh, internet was something you would access in the computer lab of the college or at an internet cafe. But at the time I left college, I had a feature phone. I could call anyone anytime. And I had, uh, most of my colleagues had PCs, they had internet, broadband connections at home, and both mobile phone as well as internet was booming. And you guys are entering a very similar world today. The world you, ent the world you left to enter college and the world now you're now entering is very, very different. Today, there is an internet connection for one out of every two Indians. There's an internet connection for one out of every two Indians. And most of these internet connections are on smartphones, which means that you can reach half of India digitally in almost real time, wherever they are. Just think about that. That's just, that's unimaginably revolutionary. And you're entering that world. You're entering a world where GST is the norm, where you can trade across India without having to worry about state boundaries and different taxation regimes. It's a one unified economy of a billion plus people. Today, you are entering a space where, where governments, both state and central, are providing you incredible amount of support systems to help you on, on your entrepreneurship journey. Open up the website of Department of Industry and Commerce, see what, what programs and schemes are there. Open up Startup Karnataka, open up Startup India, and see the amount of support the state machinery is willing to provide you. And all this is very, very special. So last but not the least, you're also entering this at a, at a very highly disruptive time frame. 
We are just emerging out of COVID. And the problem statements that our people are facing today are not the problem statements of two years ago. And these problem statements need new solutions. They need new businesses. They need new thinking and new entrepreneurship to be solved. And think of it as a fantastic opportunity for you guys to create something new and something special. Lastly, I also want to talk to you about independence. Independence in the sense that the independence that comes with being an entrepreneur. Being an employee, employee and being an employer is very, very different. Today, nobody has the obligation to provide you employment. Anybody can come to you and say, no, I don't have a job for you. That's the reality, right? You have to earn a job. But nobody in this country, because you're an Indian citizen, nobody in this country can stop you from starting a business. It's your right. It's not just a right in the fuzzy sense of the word, it's a right that the Constitution provides you. You can start trade, you can start businesses, as long as it's legal, nobody can stop you from doing it. So that's your right to be independent and create employment for a lot of others, to help your customers, to create wealth for yourself, for your families, for your investors, and for your employees. All that, is, all that is required is imagination and industry. If you're not afraid of working hard, then the value that you can create through business has no limit. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope you found value in what I had to say.